to create inequality as we currently have it, you had to take from someone to bring that to create that inequality. People lost something for that inequality to be sustained. Uh, American ruggedness was not just what created America. America taking from other people to create that. So how do you reconcile that? How do you? So I don't accept your premise. That is, uh, while I'm not going to say there weren't any injustices in American history, obviously there were. Uh, the world is not a zero-sum game. That is, the wealth is not about taking from other people. We today in the world are far, far, far richer by, I mean, it's, it's hard for you to, and all of us to imagine how much richer we are than we were 250 years ago. As, as, as a, the whole world, right? We didn't take it from anybody. There are no aliens from which we stole. Wealth is created. And we are richer, the people who are richer today didn't take it from other people. They created new wealth that didn't exist before. Now, are there injustices in the past? Yes. Uh, slavery, uh, certainly what was done to American Indians, but that doesn't explain the wealth that we have today. If anything, that retarded wealth. Uh, it, it didn't increase wealth, it retarded wealth. There's a reason why the North was richer than the South and won the Civil War, because it, it didn't have slavery. It, not having slavery encourages freedom, it encourages people to work harder, it encourages production, it became more industrial, and therefore it became richer. And that's why it won the war. Other than, it, of course, it was white, which uh, when, one would hope the white side win, wins all wars. It doesn't always happen that way. So I don't buy into the zero sum game that, that you're hypothesizing. Wealth is not an issue of redistribution. Wealth is something to be created, at least under freedom. Now, pre freedom, pre capitalism, pre industrial revolution, we had a zero sum world. The wealth was very, I don't know if you've ever seen these, these wonderful income and wealth graphs that go back 10,000 years. And they measure uh, human wealth, the human income, 10,000 years as today. And it, it, the graph is basically flat. It goes up a little bit, down a little bit. And then in 17 something, it goes like that. It goes suddenly through the roof. And in Asia, that doesn't happen. In Asia, it stays flat. And somewhere around 1970 something, it goes like that. And what happens is when you institute freedom, when you institute capitalism, the ugly word that so many people fear, wealth suddenly explodes, not because it's taken from somebody, but because it's created. I just read a story, the World Bank just today came out with a, with a statistic. For the first time in human history, uh, less than 10% of the planet, of the human beings on the planet, live below what is defined as extreme poverty. That is to be celebrated. That should be a headline in every newspaper, because it won't, because nobody wants to talk about it. But why is that? Because India and China and other places in Asia and some places even in Africa have adopted elements of capitalism and suddenly they're richer for it. So it's, it's, they haven't taken anything from something the way they've created out of nothing. Of course they've taken something away from it. I mean, you know, <laughs> obviously when you use labor, you don't have to say there's complete exploitation, but, but you're not doing it by yourself. You need people there that you're, that you're using as a labor force to be able to build what it is that you want to build. And there is, I think that's what Bill Gates talks about, in part when he talks about giving it back. It's because of the, the structure of the society, because of the availability of the workforce, and the use of that workforce, that you've been able to amass that wealth in the first place. So taking some of that back is just a reflection of the fact that it's not as individualistic as we would like to assume that it is. I think it, the, the, the myth of rugged individualism is an important myth. <coughs> and ruthless, but it's not like anybody did it on their own. They needed to have, and I think that's your point, I think they needed to have other kinds of resources. They need to be able to use the society and what was there to be able to particularly build out them. I don't think we ought to build an economic structure on that alone. I think we ought to recognize the value of individual and entrepreneurship, um, but we certainly should recognize that that's a part of it when we're thinking of this overall question of income inequality. Yeah.